in the city of Durham, North Carolina, is one of the fastest growing churches in the Triangle, New Life Christian Center. This beautiful and exciting church meets the needs of your entire family. Today, we are privileged to join Pastors Andrew and Cheryl Singletary as they present the Prevailing Word Telecast. Here's Pastor Andrew Singletary. Everybody there, Acts chapter 3? Okay, in Acts chapter 3, in Acts, in Acts chapter 3, uh, we're going to read uh, verses 1 through 8. The last time that we were together, I think we just read uh, 1 through 5, but I want to read 1 through 8 uh, this morning, okay? Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, uh, lame from his mother womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask arm of them that enter into the, uh, the temple. Verse 3, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, axed an arm. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him and John and said, look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give you. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bone received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked, and he entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising uh, God. Amen? And then we want to key in on verse number 5. Notice what it says in verse 5. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. And I want you to underline in verse number 5, expecting to receive something of them. Expecting to receive something of them. Anybody here today expecting to receive something? Okay. All right, let me ask that again. Is anybody anybody here today expecting to receive something? Amen. Amen. You know, we we always get a better, you know, we always get a, you know, a better um uh, response on the second time, and uh, by now we ought to uh, be doing better. Amen. Our first response to God ought to always be our, our best response. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, is anybody here expecting to receive anything today? So, praise the Lord. Okay. And, and he giving heed to them, expecting to receive uh, something of, of them. And with that thought in mind, uh, you know, uh, we are on a uh, uh, we are on a teaching series uh, talking about uh, the importance of uh, expectation. Everybody say the importance of expectation. Yeah, the last time that you and I uh, were together, uh, we began this teaching series talking about uh, the importance of expectation. Amen. The importance of uh, expectation. Now, uh, in part one, uh, we talked about, uh, in part one, we talked about uh, the law of expectation. You remember that? We talked about the law of expectation, and we also talked about the three kinds of expectation that are displayed in the body of Christ. And then we also gave you two definitions uh, of this word expectation. We said that definition number one, this word expectation, it means, uh, uh, it means uh, the feeling, uh, the feeling that uh, things will turn out out well. Amen. Everybody say that with me. Say the feeling that things will turn out well. Yeah, that's the first definition. The feeling that things will turn out well. Amen. How many of you believe that things are going to turn out well for you, going to turn out well for your family, is going to turn out well for you financially? Amen. Amen. And so we're expecting, so we got this feeling that things are going to turn out well for us. And then we said the definition uh, number two, it means to look for good or bad things to happen. Amen. To look for good or bad things to happen. And this definition lets us know that expectation Expectation can go both ways, amen, that it can go, it can go good and it can go bad. It also lets us know that, uh, that, that expectation, uh, our, uh, some expectations come from God and then some expectations uh, come from the devil. And this is one reason why we say that uh, this definition uh, uh, look for, for good or bad things to happen can go both ways. Amen. Expectations can go, uh, good and it can go bad. Okay. And so, uh, you know, those are the things that we dealt with and we, uh, talked a little bit about, uh, in part one. Now notice verse five again. And he says this. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something. And he gave heed to them, expecting to what? 
expecting to receive uh, something. Okay, now, let me ask you a question. Uh, what was, now think about this now, uh, what was he expecting to receive? Huh? Okay, okay. He was expecting, he was expecting to receive money from them. And this is why when Peter looked at him and he said, silver and gold, uh, you, you, know, uh, you know, we don't have. Amen. He said, silver and gold, uh, we, you know, you, you know uh, we don't have. Now, when Peter, is, when Peter says silver and gold, they didn't have, that, that didn't mean that Peter and John uh, was broke. Amen. He was just saying, at this time that you are asking, uh, uh, you know, for money, at, at this time, you know, we don't, you know, you know, we don't have any m- money on us. And that was one of the reasons why, uh, you know, they set him at the gate every day begging alms. Why? Because he was expecting what? He was expecting money, okay? Now, here's what I want you to do is this. I want you to listen very careful from here on out to what I'm about to say because this is going to be very important. And if you miss what I'm saying, then you're going to miss this whole thing about the importance of expectation, okay? Now, the question was, what was he expecting? And we said that he was expecting money, okay? Now, watch this now. Listen very carefully. Now, what he was expecting... He did not receive. But what he did receive was healing and that he was not expecting. Okay? Let me say that again. What he was expecting, he did not receive. But what he did receive was healing and he did not expect that. Now, what this lets me know This lets me know that there are some things in your life that you are expecting you will not receive. And there are some things that you are not expecting will show up in your life. Anybody get that? I said, did anybody get that? Okay, what did I say? There are some things in your life that you are expecting you will not receive. And there are some things in your life that you are not expecting is going to show up in your life. And I think right there is enough for us to give God some praise. Amen. See, in other words, you got to know and understand everything that's in your life that you're expecting. You may not receive it at the time that you are expecting it. Why? Because the man at the gate, he was expecting money. He wanted money from Peter and John at that time. But at that very moment, uh, uh, Peter and John didn't give him what he was expecting. They didn't give him money. But the very thing that he was not expecting, which was healing, he, you know, he wasn't expecting that, but he got it. So in other words, in life, there are some things that you are expecting, you will not receive at the time that you are expecting them. But however, there are some things that you are not expecting in your life, which is going to show up in your life. See, God will give you what you are not expecting. As well as giving you what you do expect. Isn't that right? And so that's why, that's, this is why, uh, you know, expectation is very important to us because we got to understand that. There are things that we are expecting, you know, will not show up in our life at the time that we're expecting them to. But just because it doesn't show up doesn't mean you won't get them. It just means that it didn't show up at the time that you were expecting them. And then life in life, there are some things that you are not expecting. It's going to show up anyway because that's how good God is. See, God will give you what you ain't expecting. You see? And so that's how good a God is. Everybody say the importance of expectation. Okay. Now, with that in mind, let's go to Psalm 62. For a moment, let's go to Psalm 62. We want to look at some things there in Psalm 62. We're talking about the importance of expectation. Psalm 62. When you get there, say, I'm there. Okay? Is everybody there in Psalm 62? All right? 
In Psalm 62, and then we want to look at, we want to look at verse 5. Psalm 62, verse 5. Now notice what it says in verse 5. My soul wait you only upon God, for my expectation is from God. Another translation says, for my expectation is in God. I want you to underline that phrase. For my expectation is from or in God. Okay? For my expectation is from or in God. This verse is letting us know that our expectation should be in God. Isn't that right? Our, our, our expectation uh, should uh, be in God. Okay? Say this with me. Say, my expectation should be in God. Yeah, yeah, our expectation uh, should uh, be in God. When your, when your expectation is in God, then child of God, uh, 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 you will not be moved. When, when your expectation uh, is in God, uh, then child of God, the devil won't be able, listen to me, the devil won't be able, uh, you know, to push you off course. Okay, see, when your expectation is in God. All right. Now, let me ask you a very important question. Is your expect, is your expectation, is it in God or is your expectation in the devil? Which one? Huh? Come on, say it out loud. Okay. So how many of you say your expectation is in God? Let me see your hand. Uh, okay, all right, put them down. It says here, uh, you, you know, by observation, you're saying that your expectation, most of you here, all of you here said that your expectation uh, uh, is uh, in God. Now, now watch this now. Listen to me very carefully. Many of you say your expectation is in God, but it's not. It's in the devil. Wait before you start throwing rocks at me. Just wait for a moment. I ask the question. How many of you is your expectation, is it in God or is your expectation in the devil? You raise your hand by a show of hand. You raise your hand and you said that my expectation is in God. Is that not right? All right. So I'm saying many of you, most all of you said that your expectation is in God, but it's not. Your expectation is in the devil. Okay? And I told you, wait, because you have picked up your big boulders and you're ready to stone me right now. Because you're saying, my, I, no, 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 pastor, my expectation uh, is in God. Now, let me give you, uh, okay, now, now, hear, hear me out. Many in the body of Christ have their expectation. Or let me put it this way. Many people in the body of Christ have more expectation, more confidence in the devil's ability that he can steal, kill, and destroy you. Many people in the body of Christ. I'm talking about saints that love God. Many of them, uh, uh, many of them uh, have uh, their expectation, uh, uh, have their uh, expectation, have their confidence uh, in the devil's ability to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Pastor Andrew Singletary, I want to take this time to thank you for watching the Prevailing Word television broadcast. I do believe that this broadcast has been a blessing to you, and so I'm encouraging you to continue to watch the Prevailing Word television broadcast. By the way, if you and your family are looking for a place to come and worship around the Word of God, how about coming and check us out, New Life Christian Center. We believe that New Life Christian Center is the place to where you can get all of your needs met. And so I'm inviting you to come and join us around the Word of the Living God. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a blessed day. Instead of in God's ability to bring you life and that more abundantly. So therefore, I submit to you, many people in the body of Christ think that their expectation is in God when it's in the devil. Because you got a whole lot of you believe and think that the devil have more, you got more uh, 
confidence, more expectation in the devil's ability to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. That's why most Christians always tell you what the devil says. Why? Because they got more confidence, more expectation in the devil's ability to steal from them, to kill them, and to destroy them. Whole lot of Christian guys there, there, listen to me, that's where their expectation is. They have more expectation in the devil's ability than they have in God's ability to give them life and that more abundantly. And that's why you got Christians that don't believe that God has the ability to give them life and so that they can have it more abundantly. That's why you got Christians in the body of Christ that love God but hate God's prosperity message. Hate God, hate the God that can give you to have more than enough. And so you think you got your expectation in God when in actuality you got your expectation in the devil's ability to steal, kill, and destroy. You ain't going to find you to walk around and say that the devil cannot steal, kill, and destroy. You believe that the devil can steal, kill, and destroy you, a child of God. Christians all over the world believe that. Speaking ten tones filled with the Holy Ghost, they believe that the devil has the ability and the authority to steal, kill, and to destroy them. So, they have more expectation in the devil's ability than they do in God's ability to where God says that he cannot steal, kill, or destroy you. But listen to me, I can give you life and that more abundantly. They don't believe that? They don't believe that? You got churches all over the world, man, that don't believe that the God that you and I serve, listen to me, is big enough and capable enough, uh, you, you know, that he doesn't want us poor, he doesn't want us beggary, you know, he doesn't want us begging. You know, they don't believe that. You got preachers that'll stand up in the pulpit and tell you, you know, it ain't all about that prosperity thing. It is all about it. That's why he died. So you wouldn't be poor. See? And so a whole lot of us, when I ask the question, how many of you got your expectation, uh, you you know, in God? Oh, I do, I do. How can you have your expectation in God, but yet you still believe that the devil has the ability to steal, kill, and to destroy you? The devil can't steal, kill, and destroy a saint that's rooted in the word of God and that's been, that's in God's hand. God says that who's in my hand and on my side, can't nobody come and pluck them out. Come on, say amen to that. See? But yet you got you, you got more confidence, more, more, more expectation in the devil's ability to steal, kill, and destroy you. You believe that. I don't believe the devil can steal, kill, and destroy me. I'm a child of God. I'm in God's hand. And God says, Who's in my hand? No man or nothing can pluck it out. The only way you get out of God's hand is because you want to get out of there. It's because you don't want to be in God's hand. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. So a lot of you think that you got uh, expectation and confidence uh, in God, but yet it's in the devil that he can still kill and destroy. I don't believe that. I don't believe the devil can kill me. Mm -mm. I don't believe that. And some people be saying, shh, don't be saying that he hears you. You know, and some people don't even want to talk like that, uh, you know, in front of the... Don't be saying that. You don't want to stir up nothing. I don't care nothing about stirring him up. See? See, that shows you where your expectation is, where your confidence is. That's why I told you, put your rocks down, because a whole lot of you believe that. That's why you got people, uh, you know, that's why you got people, uh, you know, the word came forth this morning about, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, making decisions to obey him, and when you do, that God will reward you. That's why people right now, you know, that's why I know people right now are basing decisions, listen, listen to me, they're basing on decisions because they think now, because, uh, you know, and I got myself in a predicament, and I don't see my way out. See, you're looking at your expectations. You putting your expectation based on you. I told you last week, you got to base your expectation on God. Why? Because God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can actually think, but you got your expectation in you. I got myself into this situation, so now it seems like to me, you know, we ought to leave the city and go somewhere else. Well, you leaving the city, going somewhere else, up, up, uprooting yourself from a place to where God put you. All you're doing is putting yourself in more danger. See? 
Because no matter where you go, listen to me, that you're going to take that problem with you. You're going to take that same mindset with you. Come on, say amen to that. All right, so my question was, how many of you got your expectation in God? I mean, you, you need to really think about that. That's not something you can say, well, you know, uh, you know yeah, I got my expectation in God. I, I mean, you, you know, from, from off the top, it seemed like you do. But you got to really sit down and, you know, you got to examine yourself. You got to see whether or not really is my expectation in God. Do I really believe that God can handle this? Is I'm going to uproot my family and go somewhere else be- because I got my expectation in me and the devil done told me, uh, you know, you ain't going to make it here now. You see, you, you, you ain't going to make it here now. And so fear comes in and people begin to try to do, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, what they need. They try to do it within their own strength, within their own might. Instead of God's strength and God's might. That's why it's important in the days to come that we were sharing with you this morning that in the days to come, you better base your decisions. Listen to me. You better base your decisions on the word of God and not on what you can see and what you feel and what it looks like. See, it can look bad today, but tomorrow the sun can be shining. See? But if you don't expect that, then the sun won't shine. Because the law of expectation says you're going you, to get what you expect all the time. See, and I don't expect the devil can't kill me. Now, I'm telling you, the devil can't kill me. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you believe. The devil cannot kill Andy. And that's what you ought to be saying. The devil can't kill me. How many of you are a child of God? How many of you feel with the Holy Ghost? Well, why would you have ability uh, in the devil that he can still kill and destroy you? He got the wrong person. He messing with the wrong person. He got his addresses mixed up. And so I need to help him to find out you in the wrong house. You coming to the wrong place. My expectation is in God. And God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think or even imagine or dream. See? And so, and so we got to, you know, we, you know, you know, we got to know and understand that our expectation should be in who? Our expectation should be in God. Look over at your neighbor and say, your expectation should be in God. Look at your other neighbor. Yeah. Okay. All right. So our expectation, this in Psalm 62 verse 5, the Bible says that uh, my expectation is from him. Now notice what he says. My soul or my mind wait you only upon God. See, 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 most of us, we're in this waiting position. See, listen to me. We are in this waiting position. All of us are always in a waiting position. We are waiting on God to do something uh, for us in our life. Every one of us. We are always in that position, waiting. Everybody say, always in the position of waiting. Always. Now, while we are waiting, our expectation should be in God. While we are waiting. Because while we are waiting, the, the devil can paint pictures. He can give pictures, amen? He going to give you a picture to what you look at with your natural eyes, and you'll say, ain't no way this going this to gonna, this gonna work out. So he'll give you a picture, you know, for you to look at. He'll give you something in the natural to see, and then you'll look and think, man, ain't, ain't no way this, you know, this, this going to happen. You know, I got to move now. And see, and see but, but the Bible says that, when you, listen to me, when you're waiting on God, listen to me, my soul, my, my soul, wait. You only upon God. It's telling your mind you need to settle down and just wait and put your expectation on God. I'm talking to a whole lot of people in here this morning. I said I'm talking to a a whole lot of people in here this morning. See, some of you about to make the biggest mistake of your life talking about when the New Year's come, here's what we're going to do. When the New Year's come, if you don't do what I'm telling you to do, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. He's already feeding your mind. And you're already feeding your husband, feeding your wife wrong information, wrong info. And wrong info can kill you. Wrong info can destroy you. See? Because you, you done made a bad decision, you know. So, but you got to put your expectation in God. I don't care anything about the bad decision. I find out, hey, I made a bad decision, but God can, you know what? God, God can, I can correct the bad decision that I made. 
But if I don't put my expectation in God, I'm going to move with the bad decision. And the bad decision is going to cause me to lose in life. Some of y'all better, you you better get what I'm talking about because I'm talking about you this morning. I see you all in my mind. I see you all in my spirit. I'm talking about you. Hunter neighbor say, is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? See, some of y'all, some of them y'all hunting, it's them. (laughs) It's them. See, it's them. And ain't no need to plant no seed talking about, you know, I sowed a seed for this. Listen to me. Sowing a seed based upon a wrong decision ain't worth five cents. Ain't going to do nothing. See, (laughs) planting a seed ain't going to work. Planting a seed based upon a wrong decision and all you're doing is adding more to it. More fire, you know, more fuel to the fire. So don't start sowing no seed based upon no wrong uh, decision. You know, see. That's, that's, That's the time when I won't receive from a person. When I know you sitting up there trying to sow a seed and I know you're wrong, you know you wrong. I don't want no seed from you. Because what you're trying to do is trying to work some magic, something. Maybe if I sow in the pastor's life, you know, and the pastor uh, set my seed, maybe if I sow in there, you know, maybe, just maybe, you know, something. Like that. Ain't nothing going to happen. Ain't nothing going to happen. And I ain't going to let you play magic tricks with me. I'm going to tell you, no, I won't receive your seed at this time. And you know why I won't receive your seed at this time? See? All right. And so he says here in verse 5, he says in verse 5, where are we at? In Psalm what? In Psalm 62. Okay, so he says here in verse 5, my soul, my mind, my soul, my mind. See, that's what's running while you're waiting on God. Is your soul, is your mind. See? And he says now, while while you're waiting on God, don't allow your mind to just run and cause your expectation to not be in God. How many, how many of y'all understand what I'm saying? So he says now, uh, you, you know, uh, my soul, my mind, wait you on, upon God for, for what? My expectation is in him. My, my expectation got to be in God while I'm waiting on God. That's what my expectation got to be. It's from, you know, is in God. My expectation is in God. That's why I can declare that the devil can't kill me. See, the devil can't kill me. And I'm not afraid to talk about the devil, you know, and let you know he's a liar, he's a thief, and he ain't got no power over the the saints of God. The only power the devil got over the saints of God is the power the saints give him. That's the only power he got over you. See, and we walk around, don't say nothing about the devil, don't stir up nothing, don't stir him up. Are you looking for a church that meets the needs of your entire family? Well, if you are, New Life Christian Center is the church for you. Pastors Andrew and Cheryl Singletary personally invite you to be part of one of the fastest growing churches in the Triangle. New Life Christian Center is where we produce the Prevailing Word TV broadcast. Service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We provide children's church at our Sunday morning services. We provide ministries for women. Men, singles, and teens. Come visit us at 7415 Fayetteville Road in Durham, North Carolina. For more information, visit us on the web at www.theprevailingword.org or call us at 919-405-2080. New Life Christian Center, where the Word prevails.